Have you ever wondered how complex of a being you are? You comprehend the world through multiple channels of perception at the same time. While watching this video, you see a beautiful picture on your screen, which not only pleases the eye, but also feeds information to your brain. Then you hear the sound of the enchanting voice of the narrator that takes you on the path of knowledge and also presents you some information. And you are most likely lying on your couch tapping your smartphone. This, of course, doesn't quite apply to me, but you also get some information from these touches. By combining all these channels of perception, you define yourself in space, form relationships and gain new knowledge. People have different dominating channels of perception. So, in this episode, I want to talk visual, auditory, kinesthetic, and one more type of perception which was discovered relatively recently. Now get ready for a quick test. Close your eyes. Have you? Well, if you haven't, then blame yourself. Take a deep breath, exhale, and imagine that you are being moved to the forest right from your room. Have you imagined it? What do you feel? If the first thing you pictured is an image of a forest, then most likely you are a visual type. The auditory type will first hear the birdsong, while the kinesthetic type will feel the piercing forest wind, or the ground under their feet. Visual's strongest channel of perceiving the world functions through their eyes. For them, picturing the information is the most crucial way of obtaining knowledge. Moreover, even spoken words hint at their type. Their vocabulary most often consists of the following phrases. Look, it seems to me. I saw, I noticed, I'm glad to see, and so on. When interacting with people, they will pay close attention to their appearance. And it's not just about neatness. Clothes must be clean and ironed. Gestures, gait, facial expressions, they look at it all. Unconsciously, visuals can analyze even a person's posture, and at the same unconscious level, they can read your attitude towards them. They don't have to say anything, they will see everything for themselves. Hence, their craving for perfectionism. Look here. What's up? A little unnerving. How about this? Feeling better? If so, then you most likely have a more developed visual channel. But let's not exaggerate. Obviously, visuals aren't deaf. It's just that they will simply try to convert any information they hear into a picture in their heads. If no picture appears, they will simply discard the information as unsuitable for their type of perception. They need a drawing, a map, a photograph, or at least some kind of blueprint. If there is none of that, then the information will be forgotten. When they think about approaching a pretty girl, an entire movie scene will play out in their heads. They will imagine how they come up to her, what the girl is wearing, how they talk to her, and how she responds. And at the end, they will definitely fall in truly movie-esque love. Well, let us wish them good luck. Due to the ability to generate new images, these people are often generators of ideas, setting goals in their heads, or rather, ideal visions that they want to materialize. And people whose faces they also remember perfectly will help them in this. There may be problems with the names, though, but for names, we've got another specialist. These guys are great at all sorts of sound tricks, they are attentive to their speech, they make excellent storytellers, and it's simply enjoyable to listen to them. They perfectly control the intonation and tone of their voice. For them, it is not the picture that is primary, but the sound itself. And the top-notch perception of sound most often suggests an ear for music. They pay such special attention to their friends as well. Auditory types hate it when you make mistakes in your speech. By the way, they can be spotted not only by that trigger, their brains also leave markers in the way they talk. Unlike visuals, they use phrases such as, listen, I didn't hear, I'm glad to hear it, and so on. You won't hear from them that they are hard of hearing, they prefer listening to a lecture or an audiobook. The most important thing is that the speaker is a professional, and then the content will be understood without a doubt. 
Moreover, auditory types will be able to recite the lecturer's words very accurately. Same thing with discussions. They are great at absorbing information through conversations, but the noisy environment is their kryptonite. Auditory people can easily be distracted from work by background noise. Kinesthetics share similarities with sanguine people. You can find out more about the types of temperament by following this link. Kinesthetic types are the closest to the material world. They are like, screw your pictures, screw your lectures, let me try to make something with my hands, then I'll get it. They touch, feel and collect. The bodily channel of world perception is a priority for them. They believe that listening to a lecture is, of course, nice, but it is better to write it down or draw with their own hands though and not just write off the notes from a friend because that way they won't remember anything. They are natural motors, so to speak. For them, reading books, for example, is not particularly interesting, but running in the woods is a different matter. It's difficult for them to sit through monotonous work. They immediately get distracted. But building something with their own hands is a real pleasure. This also applies to relationships. A kinesthetic is extremely sensitive to their environment, clothes they are wearing, and even more so to people who dare to touch them. For kinesthetics, even a simple touch is an invasion into their personal space. So, if you have watched a ton of courses on seduction and learned a secret technique of imperceptible, as if random touches, then a kinesthetic will immediately jump away from you and ask you to piss off. By the way, they also have signature words and phrases like It feels nice, I've got goosebumps, it's pleasantly warm, it's disgusting, it's repulsive. All these describe a bodily or emotional state. And the last type of people, one might say, came from another planet. They can be imagined as creatures, or rather robots, whose processor solves only one task, the search for meaning. Everything else, picture, sound or setting, doesn't really concern them. They are only interested in one thing, understanding the essence. These are super rational creatures that are alien to social traditions. Digitals can start arguing with an elder and an experienced person if there is an objective reason for that. If you're into TV shows, you might have seen such mutants in characters like Sheldon Cooper or Sherlock Holmes. They are primarily interested in the meaning of things and what is in their nature. In a conversation, they not only listen but also try to understand why another person is saying what they're saying and what is the real goal of a conversation. Digitals cannot stand a talk that's not to the point, even if the speech flows from a skillful auditory type. After all, what is the meaning of all these intricate idioms if there is no logic or connection behind them and it is impossible to create a scheme out of it? So, they are one of the few who really like to read manuals. Don't ask them how do you feel because often they feel nothing, but rather ask what do you think about this? You might hear their trademark phrases in response, I don't understand, what is the point, or how are these things related? Logic and connections are the credos of these robots. Actually, the very term digital implies the appropriate way of thinking. Just like in the video about temperaments, here we present you with the types in their purest form, which can hardly be found in reality. I think it's clear that a visual is not someone who only sees and completely ignores everything else. Here we need to be like a digital type and understand that firstly, this is a video about dominant channels of perception, those that initiate everything else. If we say music, the auditory type will first hear it in their head and then fill out the picture, while a visual is quite the opposite. And secondly, this is just a fun video which might be interesting to watch and possibly learn something about yourself. There is one more interesting point. There are people that believe that the division into auditory, visual and others is tied to the types of learning. So, for example, auditories only need lectures, while kinesthetics can only learn from manual work. It is clear that this is nonsense. 
Personally, I wouldn't like to get to a surgeon who doesn't read books, listen to lectures, or conduct personal experiments. And when it comes to training itself, everything works a little differently. In the late 60s in Ohio, Edgar Dale experimented with various ways of presenting the material, and here is what he ended up with. It turned out that people remember only 10% of what they read, and gradually when they add new sources of information like lectures, pictures, videos, examples, experiments, and so on up to their own work, the level of students' understanding grows as well as their skills. By watching the video, which is right here by the way, you grasp only 30% of the information. Oh well, here we are. But again, this doesn't negate the fact that only one channel of perception dominates in humans, but in general, every one of us is a visual, auditory, kinesthetic, and even digital. Hit that like button and subscribe, and I'm Boney Wright.